and Laura Vitali. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make a ginger, cranberry, and pear crisp. It's really good, really easy, and I think it's perfect for this time of year, and I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. But before we get started, let's go over the ingredients. You'll need some pears, which I'll talk about in just a minute, brown sugar, all-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, old-fashioned oats. You're going to need some unsalted butter, cold, some fresh cranberries, some regular sugar, crystallized ginger, additional all-purpose flour, a pinch of cinnamon, some lemon, and some clementines. Now, the pears are just bosk pears that I've peeled, cored, and then chopped in bite-sized pieces, and those are ready. And now, it's pretty easy. Now, the first thing you want to do is get your oven preheated to 400. The second thing you want to do is take a baking, sh you know, baking dish, uh, casserole dish, or of it, you know, whichever you have, and just spray it with nonstick spray, or you can just brush it with some butter, anything like that really. So let's get right into it. Super easy, very simple. You've got your pears. We're going to add in some fresh cranberries. You can also use frozen. Just wash those. Um, if you don't want to use cranberries or if they're hard to find in your supermarket or wherever you live, you can just substitute the cranberries by adding additional pears and then just using a little bit less sugar. And then that way you'll just have a ginger pear crisp. That's it, you don't have to add the cranberries. I just love anything cranberries around this time of year and I make a lot of dessert with them, so which I'm sure you're, we, you've are you been checking out. And um, so that's, that's why I add them. I think they're fantastic and I love them. So, you've got the cranberries, the pears, you're gonna need some sugar. The cranberries are very, very tart, so it's super important to add some sugar. Some crystallized ginger, which gives it a really sort of, almost like a subtle heat, and I love that. Love it. My husband loves crystallized ginger. He eats it like candy. So he really likes this one. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna add the juice of a half a lemon. And now it's time to zest and juice two clementines. If you don't have clementines, you can just use a small orange. Um, you guys know I just love clementines and I always have them around at this time of year. So they're a complete must for me. So just and they smell so good. I mean, these, these are something like I snack on constantly. Um, and I, I don't know, I just adore them. They, really, they bring me back to my childhood because my grandmom has a clementine tree. And we always, always picked fresh clementines off of her tree and ate them constantly. And she also um, makes, you know, limoncello, which is usually made with lemons. She makes it with clementines. So that's a little fun fact there. The last of the clementine juice. Squeeze as much of it in there as possible. If you get some of the pulp in there, good for you because that's delicious. So, my little towel there. Now I just need to add the flour and a little teeny tiny pinch of cinnamon, not a whole lot. And the flour really is important because that's what's going to thicken those juices that come out from the pears and the cranberries and give you just a really sort of thick sauce. So delicious. Just give this a really good stir, just to make sure everything is well coated. Put that right in there. Look at that, it just looks like festive, doesn't it? I'm really excited about this. You know, I think something that a lot of people don't realize is that, I mean obviously, there's a lot of cooking going on when it comes to, you know, on your actual holiday, like Christmas Day, for example. But what about leading up to it? I mean, I know I like to have friends over, not you know, not just on that specific holiday. So having recipes like this in your repertoire that you can kind of put together easily. For example, I could put this thing together, combine it, you know, put the top on, pop it in the fridge, and then bake it when my friends come over. Is awesome. So if it's like a weeknight or a weekend that you don't have a lot of time to just kind of sit in the kitchen and make cinnamon rolls or something like that. This is a great recipe for that. So, anyway, in the same bowl, I'm putting in my oats, flour, brown sugar, baking powder, and salt. And I always like to add baking powder because I feel like the baking powder gives the topping, like a, because the baking powder makes it light, it makes it crispier. So, that's why I add it. I'm just taking a fork and kind of combining the dry ingredients together and just making sure that they're all pretty well combined and the brown sugar doesn't have such big pieces running through it. That looks good. I'm going to add in your butter. This is cold unsalted butter and I'm just going to use my fork and mix it, oops, mix it through until everything is in light, little tiny, the butter is in little tiny pieces and you have a really coarse mixture. 
That looks good enough. I'm not going to be too picky about it. Let's bring this over. And I'm just going to put the top evenly over the pears, the topping. Now make sure that you put, you know, this, this mixture, well, your, your baking dish on top of a cookie sheet or a baking sheet because in case anything would have bubble over, you don't want it to go in your oven. You want your baking sheet to catch it because cleaning an oven is the worst job in my opinion and I don't like to do it. So if I can avoid doing it, I do. So now that's going to go into the oven preheated at 400 for about 40 to 45 minutes. You're looking for the top to be really golden brown and crispy and the actual filling to be nice and bubbly. I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. My crisp baked for about 40 minutes and I've let it cool for about 15 minutes because it, the filling was literally bubbling and I did not want to you know, risk burning the roof of my mouth because you know I'm very impatient. This looks fantastic. The top is awesomely crunchy. Let's dig into some of this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know what's better. The smell of this, the taste probably, or the fact that I feel kind of naughty taking such a big serving before dinner. Not sure yet, but we're about to find out. This is going to be hot. Mmm. That is awesome. That is awesome. Mm-mm. It's got a real subtle flavor from the ginger until you bite into it, but a really sort of sweet aroma from the ginger and the clementine. It all just goes together so, so well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Go to lauraindikitchen.com because you've got to make this recipe for whatever get together you have coming up because I guarantee it not only is it completely ridiculously easy to put together, but it will definitely wow your guests. I'm sure of it. Trust me. You know what you do. Now, like I said, lauraindikitchen.com to get this recipe and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.